For the weekend, I wanted to visit my boyfriend. He lives two hours away, and I always go by train. I'm not easily spooked, but I always keep an eye out. One hour into the trip. It was around 8 p.m. M. I see two men getting in the same train compartment as me. I was sitting in a two-seat. The seat next to me was empty, and in front of me there was a seat for four people. So two pairs of seats facing each other. The men came in being very loud, even though it was a silent compartment. But nobody said anything because they already seemed very suspicious from the moment they stepped into the train. Probably before they got in, they had their eyes fixated on me. They stepped in through the doors and sat in the seat in front of mine, the four seat. And from then on they kept an eye on me while discussing things with each other in a language I did not understand. Like every other girl, I get stared at frequently, especially when I wear my hair down. It normally makes me feel a bit awkward, but I never feel unsafe when this happens. Until yesterday, they were staring at me in every way possible through the chairs, standing up, sitting down and bending over to get a good look through the reflection of the mirror and by getting up and walking past me. They were taking turns and walking over to the other compartment of the train. The other compartment was only separated from mine with a glass door. Every time one of them got up, they both started staring at me. Then one of them went away and the other one had clear vision of me and kept staring at me. He poked his head through the middle of the seats and offered me chocolate, which I politely refused. Then the other one came back and five minutes later the man who did not go away yet went away in the same way. They kept taking turns and walking away. Every time one of them got up, the one who remained seated kept an eye on the other and on me. Each time they were sitting across from each other. They discussed things, but I could not translate it. They kept looking at me and then started discussing again. When I had 20 minutes of my trip left, a lot of people got out. At one stop it was just me, them, and one other male. Then the moment the doors were about to close, one of the creepy men started walking through the doors to check if there were people coming in and maybe to check if there was security. I don't know why he did it, but when he came back, he scanned the train to see how many people were still on there. From that moment on, they both got in seats facing me. They would not stop staring. At this point, as you can imagine, I panicked and was really stressed out. So I slowly turned around to look behind the glass doors to see if there were more people there that could maybe help me and to my luck there were more people there. I slowly and very softly put on my jacket. We still had more than 10 minutes left and I kid you not, not even 2 minutes later, one of the men starts getting dressed too. He took his purse and his jacket and kept looking at me and fixating on me while still discussing something with the other man. This was where I really panicked. I already let my friends know what was going on and my boyfriend was already at the train stop where I was supposed to get out. Then I contemplated what the smartest thing to do was because there is an emergency number on the train that you can call or text if you feel unsafe. But I had a gut feeling that this would not help me. So I got my bags, got up and walked through the glass doors to the other compartment. I sat facing them so I could see what they were doing. They both got up, grabbed their bags and started walking towards me. Mind you, they were sitting closest to the exit, so there was absolutely no reason for them to take this route too. I rapidly started to talk to someone on the seats next for mine and asked if he could help me because I was getting followed and watched by two grown men. He said he also thought they were very suspicious and was getting scared for me. He asked me to sit next to him so he could keep me a little safer and distract the men or something. Then he distracted me a little and asked me questions about my life. When the two creeps saw I got seated next to that man, they were already coming my way and were making their way through the doors of the compartment. There are glass doors so we could see each other very clearly. I had not shown my fear but I was shaking so uncontrollably that they must have seen how scared I was. The moment they got through that door, they saw me getting seated next to the other man and the creeps exchanged looks, looked at me, discussed something, 
looked at me again, turned around, and went the other way. Again they were walking to the exit of the train where again is a glass door so we could still see each other. The whole time they were standing around the exit, they were looking at me with a very creepy and disturbed look on their faces. I describe it as you got away, but you won't be lucky next time. That's how it felt. The man I was sitting next to also got the hang of this and was calming me down. He told me he was not going to let me get of the train by myself and would wait with me until my boyfriend would arrive. That was amazing and I felt comforted. But then our stop came and we walked to our side of the exit. And then came a realization. In the exit of the train, there were two other men with the same kind of looks as the two creeps. They talked the same language and they acted weird too. These men were probably the men who the two creeps visited every few minutes. The men at the exit saw me, looked at me with a creepy look. But then the man who kept me safe made sure to them that he walked with me, and immediately they looked away. They also covered their faces with their hoods. The doors opened and they nearly sprinted out of there, just like the other two creeps. Then the man who escorted me out waited with me until we found my boyfriend, and then he went on with his day. We both could not thank him enough for keeping me safe. I thought I lived in a very safe country in Europe, but I think that as long as you're a young woman on your own, you will never be 100% safe. While traveling, slash being alone, I hate thinking about what would have happened if I was not helped by the man in the other department. I wish I could have thanked him with gifts or a nice gesture, but I don't know his name and will probably never see him again. To the man who saved me, I thank you with all my heart. About two years ago, I was driving home from a friend's house around 12 in the morning. For context, we both live in a relatively suburban area and the route I frequent when traveling between our houses is about a 15 minutes drive. There is a mileage stretch of road on this route that has few street lights. Along this stretch is a storage facility and some other smaller industrial warehouses. While this road is usually heavily trafficked during the day, at night it is quiet and dark with few cars and people around. I don't remember when I felt like I was being followed. It was an acute sensation that something was off. I was the only car on this road until suddenly I wasn't. Headlights appeared out of the darkness in my rearview mirror, seemingly out of nowhere, and they were close behind. I forced the feeling down, however, as I got closer and closer to my house, that gnawing feeling of wrongness only grew worse. I turned into my neighborhood and now, under the glow of streetlights, saw the vehicle. Behind me was a U-Haul box truck. Weird, but not necessarily out of place. I decided to bypass my house out of an abundance of caution and to appease my rising feelings of unease. I made a loop around my block and they were still there, right behind me. I was being followed. I decided I needed to get away from my neighborhood, because no way did I want whatever creep this was to know where I lived. I drove expeditiously toward one of the largest streets, the truck close behind. At one point, the truck sped up and was driving alongside my car on the wrong side of the road. Turn after turn, you turn up and down several streets. I didn't know what to do, and by some coincidence, we were the only vehicles on the road through this ordeal. In my panic, I did, in hindsight, a not smart thing. I stopped in the middle of the street, rolled down my window and tried to talk to the driver. The truck pulled up to a stop beside me, passenger window down. I leaned forward and said hello, mainly because I didn't know what else to say, and even when terrified, I'm still awkward. The driver appeared to be alone and wearing a black jacket with the hood pulled up. I could only see their hooded silhouette against the streetlight behind them, not their face or any distinguishing features. They did not respond to my greeting, instead just turned and stared at me. I felt a ripple of fear and that was it. I floored it and sped off to the closest public safety center I knew of. They continued to follow me until I pulled into the parking lot and parked in view where I thought there may be cameras. The truck bypassed the driveway, 
flipped a U-turn and then was gone. I sat in that parking lot, shaking and crying for a good 10 minutes, then left back to my friend's house for fear the truck might still be driving around my neighborhood. The following day I sent a note to U-Haul and our police department, but no one has ever followed up with me about what happened that night. While I was in a KFC branch in there, someone on Grinder with a blank profile messaged me while waiting for my food on the table. I shrugged it off and he didn't send me any pictures, just messages saying hi and asked if he could give me the best blowjob I would ever have. Seeing I'm in a public place and absolutely do not have the mood to be horny, I did not reply and proceeded to eat my meal. After eating, I left the mall and waited for a ride to go home. It was dark at the time, so I had to be vigilant on my surroundings. While looking out on the road, the same guy messaged me and asked me where I am currently. I saw that his distance from me was only 70 meters away. This is getting a bit worse, so I closed the app immediately and proceeded to continue ignoring him. Around 5 minutes later, a guy stood beside me trying to act unsuspicious, even though my gut feelings are telling me something's wrong with him. He looked like he's in his late 30s and a bit bigger than me, both height and weight. I started having some goosebumps while standing beside him. It only got worse when he tapped on my shoulder and asked if he could suck my dick off. I froze having no idea what to do, but then I suddenly punched him in the face when he started grabbing my crotch and tried unbuttoning my pants. I then pushed him off me hard enough. He lied down on the ground and tried running away as far as I could. I then saw him chasing me afterwards. Luckily, a taxi drove nearby and I rushed inside as fast as possible. I knew it was him because his grander profile tells me he's only literally one meter away from me. I blocked the profile and logged out of the app. What I realized is I wasn't logged out at the time, therefore my location was exposed and my profile picture in the app was my face, which wasn't covered, meaning it's easy for me to get identified there. Also, the location of the mall is shitty as there isn't a lot of lights around it and it's surrounded by shitty looking houses and roads. Worse, there wasn't much of people where I stood at the time and also it was dark meaning I wasn't able to identify the man correctly to report him to the local authorities.